So welcome everyone to another Country Dance New York online concert, part of an occasional series launched to support the gig musicians who play for our dances. Tonight's, the sixth so far, uh, is unusual in that whatever you donate via the tip jar for tonight's soloist, Cynthia Shaw, will be split 50-50 with her and the concert fund a generous offer from Cynthia herself. To make the experience more enjoyable, you can turn on original sound in your Zoom audio settings by clicking on the blue uh, advanced button on the lower right. Once you click on audio settings, or if you see the blue button in your own screen um, on the upper left, you can use that. Um, in addition, because Cynthia is using an especially sensitive mic, please be sure that you are muted throughout the concert. When we think of Cynthia, most of us have one or two pictures in our mind. Um, Cynthia, the pianist in an ECD band, um, or Cynthia singing for a birthday or some other event at one of our breaks. But there is so much more to her story. Uh, she sings in choir, she teaches, she's an, an accomplished graphics artist. And did I mention that she dances uh, both English and Contra? And of course, Cynthia is a successful actor with a smash solo hit to her credit velvet determination, celebrating the path she took to become the pianist she is. And even this extraordinary list of accomplishments doesn't cover it all. To learn more, please visit her website. Uh, it's entertaining and it's eye-opening. But maybe you don't have to, at least not this moment. Maybe it's just enough for tonight to sit back, mute your mics, turn on original sound, and listen to the classical side of Cynthia Shaw. Hi, everybody. I'm so glad everybody's here. This has been, um, anyway, it's just really great to be here. And I want to thank CDNY for sponsoring this concert. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and thank Paul Ross for um, hosting and for Galen Fitzpatrick for helping me with all sorts of technical uh, situations and new mics and an audio box and all of this stuff that I've had to uh, set up in, in my home to play for you. Um, I, as Paul said, many of you, it kind of, it kind of surprised me actually at the dances when people would be like, oh, you, you, oh, you, you just play for dances. They, not even knowing that I had like a master's degree from Manhattan School of Music uh, in piano performance. So it's, it's just so interesting how people don't know so much about each other and yet we see each other all the time. So. Um, and in fact, um, my teacher at Manhattan School, Dr. Solomon Makovsky, I believe is in the audience here. And so I'm really happy that he's here. Thank you for being here. And I want him to know that I still have the piano that he helped me buy, the Kawai, all those many, many years ago uh, when I was studying with him. So the first piece I'm going to play for you is the Bach Italian Concerto. It's in three movements. Uh, I, I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget. Um, there's an Allegro, an Adante, and a Presto. And the reason it's called an Italian concerto was that at the time of Bach, there was um, the style, an Italian style, which was the orchestra and then the soloist. Or on harpsichords, there were two manual keyboards on the harpsichord, and one of them would be louder and one of them would be softer. So that's, that's the Italian style. Um, uh, but, but, but what else I was going to say? Um, oh, I wanted to just read you one funny quote that I came across today and then I'll play, which is um, I'm in this Artist Way group where we've been reading through the Artist Way book, but we also started reading this book called Free Play. And in the beginning of it, there's just a little quote that I just think is just so awesome about Bach. Okay, there is a story of one of Bach's pupils asking him, Papa, how do you ever think of so many tunes? To which Bach replied, my dear boy, my greatest difficulty is avoid stepping on them when I get up in the morning. <laughs> so I just love this image of seeing all these tunes all over the floor on, in Bach's um, 
and box bedroom, all of them like spewing out of his, his very creative mind. All right, so anyway, the Bach Italian Concerto. Enjoy.
That's the Bach Italian Concerto. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, I don't know whether you noticed, but there was this whole thing about turning pages. And people who play with music actually oftentimes have to coordinate and orchestrate and choreograph how they turn their pages because sometimes the music publishers are really great about that and they, they make the music so the page turns make perfect sense, but sometimes that's not the case. And I, I, I was just remembering back many years ago when I used to do a lot of musical directing, when you're playing a musical score, you know, there's 100, 150 pages of music and you're constantly flipping the pages, flipping, flipping. And I thought, this is like 30 years ago, I thought, God, you know, It'd be so great if there was like some sort of like TV camera or TV screen that could be on your, your music stand here, right? And, and all you'd have to do to change the page is just touch a little thing on the floor and it would turn the page for you and you wouldn't have to constantly be turning pages. Little did I know what a visionary I was <laughs> that if I had only bought stock in myself because those things now exist, like everybody uses them. So anyway. Oh, there you go. So the next piece I'm going to play um, are these two Bach Rhapsodies, Opus uh, Bach, two Proms Rhapsodies, Opus 79. The first one's in B minor and the second one is in G minor. And I have to say that I fell in love with these because I fell in love with the G minor first. I heard somebody play it on a recital in college or something and I just loved it. It starts like this. so awesome using the whole piano all the way to the end but there were two of them there was one before and I thought well you can't learn one without the other because it's like a little set so the other one the, uh, the B minor uh, was not as appealing to me I have to say but it had a beautiful middle section that I thought was just so so gorgeous so I decided to learn both of them obviously and um, now I'm going to play them for you They were um, published in 
So that was a little Brahms to warm you up tonight. <laughs> I love how passionate that music is and how like it's like ferocious and then beautiful and sweet and then it gets ferocious again. Um, yeah, so I really love those two pieces. Um, the final piece I'm going to play for you of the um, classical program uh, part of this is the Debussy Lille Joyeuse, which is for me the the um, um, the newest piece for me, but it's actually the piece that I've played the most because I've been playing it a lot because I love it so much. Um, so Lille Joyeuse means um, the joyous isle, which I think is awesome. Awesome, and I was doing a little research because I thought I should talk about something, and um, so I discovered that the Lille Joyeuse is made up of three different scales. Okay. The A major scale, which is this scale, the A Lydian scale, isn't that cool? And then the A whole tone stake scale. So those three scales are used throughout this piece and they kind of interweave with each other. Um, the other really fun thing about this piece is that I have to read you this because I just thought it was so awesome. Um, it's inspired by an er early 18th century painting by Antoine Watteau called L'Embarque pour Kithara, or the um, um, Embarking for Kithara, the Greek island. Um, so it's the, this painting is a, a scene of a party of people out of, about to embark for the Isle of Kithara, which was the birthplace of Venus. And though, so it symbolized um, the temporary nature of human happiness. So the fun thing about this is that this piece was written at a time when Debussy started having an affair with Emma Bardock, a French singer who was married. He was married, she was married. And he was introduced to, she was introduced to him by her own son who was taking lessons from Debussy. And she had already had affairs with Gabrielle Fauré, so now she moved on to Debussy. So they went to um, on a little vacation to this island, and Debussy wrote this piece, uh, or started this piece. And she, um, when he came back, he was so in love with Emma that he immediately told his wife that was it; it was over. He was divorcing her. And then his wife got so crazy that she went into in Paris with a gun, and she was going to shoot herself. So it's very dramatic. And so, of course, this is a huge scandal. So they they hide it off to um, London, and when the divorces were finally granted, um, they married for a 10-year tumultuous marriage before Debussy died. Um, so what one writer writes is, this colorful piano work depicts the ecstasy of lovers. Here we go, the Lille Joyeuse.
Thank you. I hope you liked the little real joyeuse. <laughs> Such a great piece. Oh my gosh. Ah. So um, I'd like to end the program, the published program, first of all, by thanking Country Dance New York for sponsoring this event and sponsoring me. Thank Paul Ross for hosting and taking care of all of the details and the CDNY board. Um, thank Galen Kirkpatrick for all of his technical expertise, helping me with sound and all of these things, as I mentioned. And as Paul mentioned, um, uh, there is a tip jar, uh, which I think Galen is posting. So I encourage everyone, if you can, to tip as much as you want. Um, as I said, it goes to me, but I'm going to make a half and half donation to CDNY to support their music and dance funds and scholarships and all sorts of things. Um, CDNY, if you don't know, is Country Dance New York is a dance uh, organization in New York City that's been here since the 50s, um, sponsoring English country dances, contra dances. Um, so it's part of a huge network in the country of dancing. So I encourage you to do that. Um, the final three pieces I'm gonna play are actually Engl English country dance tunes. Um, and I chose them because Paul asked me to base, find tunes that were based on um, uh, composed music. So what you don't know about English country dance tunes is that they run the gamut from like medieval tunes to tunes that were composed like an hour ago. So there are all sorts of styles. If you've ever seen any Jane Austen movies, you've seen English country dance music and dances um, and we actually dance to some of those tunes that are in those films so the first one that i chose is one of my absolute favorites called easter morn and it's by um, isaac cooper from 1790 um, but i love it because to me it's very new agey and i feel i play it very new agey i doubt that isaac cooper really wanted it to be new agey but i play it that way anyway the second piece i'm going to play is a piece called when laura smiles and it's a tune by Philip Rossiter from 1601. And uh, Orly Krasner, one of our English country dance callers, teachers, and uh, composers, uh, dance composers, wrote a beautiful dance to this tune that people in New York love to dance to. It's a very, very popular tune. So I think you'll really enjoy that. And then the final piece I'm playing is um, The Queen of Sheba 2 which is based on uh, Handel's The Arrival of the Queen of Sheba. So it's a lively little jaunt in uh, English country dance music. So enjoy these three tunes. Oh, I have to improvise on them, just so you know that. Maybe people don't know. There's just a melody and chord, so just so you know that.
you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for listening to me play my pieces. So rewarding. Just so, so rewarding. So thank you so much. Um, I think there's Paul. Cynthia, thank you very much. Um, we are all in in ecstasy over the music you've performed for us. Um, Brahms Rhapsody has en enveloped us, and um, <laughs> and I think that uh, Debussy's joy has also infused us. So thank you so much. Uh, we don't have a plan for the next few minutes, uh, other than to invite folks to um, ask uh, questions or make comments to Cynthia. Uh, I only ask that you keep yourselves muted unless you're you're speaking, and uh, and just be cautious of of not um, piling up on each other as as uh, we address the the questions we want to Cynthia. So thank you everyone for coming. And thank you, Cynthia, for a fabulous program of music. And now, if we would like to unmute, just for a moment, we can all give our applause. <laughs> but I can't do that. Okay. But the good thing about, I told Paul before this, the good thing about, um, Performing in your home is I get to wear like comfy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start the questions with um, with something about the Italian concerto, Cynthia. I have two questions for you. Uh oh, I hope I know well, the answer. Well, they're not hard. <laughs> um, would you have taken the last movement uh, faster if you? Um, you know, had been able to spend more time with it. Maybe. And would you have considered doing it on the harpsichord? I don't really play the harpsichord, so I can't uh -huh. really say that. Um, I would, I would, uh, I would challenge Rebecca Pachewski to play it on the harpsichord. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't really play the harpsichord. So, um, so maybe I could play it faster. I don't know. I mean, I had tempo markings. You know, um, you know, I've played it since the 80s. I, I started working on it in 1982, actually. So at one point, I probably played it faster, but at this, I, I did not, not right now. Yes, <laughs> but, and at one point, we danced faster. Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, isn't the queen, entry of the Queen of Sheba by Handel? Yes. Yeah, it's not yeah. Vivaldi. Yeah. Did I say Vivaldi? No, Paul did. Oh, 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 no, it's by Handel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's by Handel. And I probably played it too fast for dancing, but there you go. It's a concert. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I wish I could read everybody's chats. So, um, yeah, I don't know if anyone else has any questions or, you know, the thing is that um, because of the pandemic, I've been home more, obviously, as we all have been home, and so many things have been taken away. But what was not taken away from me was the piano and actually um, getting back to it in a major kind of way that I really had the time to really devote to practicing the piano, which um, I haven't really been able to. And one of the pieces I did in a concert at the end of, April, of August was I played the whole Schubert B-flat major, um, the last, the final sonata which I had always wanted to play. And so I just decided, okay, this is my, my chance to, to play that, that, um, that sonata. It's like an, you know, 45 minute sonata. So, um, and Rebecca, so Rebecca play the Bach <laughs> anyway. So, um, so this is actually the third concert I've done. And I just feel really fortunate to make, you know, as I say, a silk purse out of a sow's ear, you know, being able to practice. So Cynthia, Yes. Would you like to tell us just a little bit, this is Paul. Yes, I know Would Paul. Would you like to tell us just a little bit about the technical challenge of tonight's concert? Oh. I mean the uh, <laughs> audio recording and so forth. Oh, that part. I thought you meant like the actually playing of the piano. <laughs> um, so I don't know if people are aware of this or not, but at the beginning of the pandemic, everybody suddenly jumped to Zoom everybody 
And suddenly Zoom, which was just sort of used for meetings a little bit, was suddenly the place for everybody to go. And Zoom um, initially had a really hard time with it was a huge problem for Zoom, and you couldn't like like you'd be playing, and all of a sudden everything would stop, and then the sound would speed up, and then slow down. It was just really really awful. So obviously the Zoom engineers worked really hard these past couple of months to really up their game as far as they go. Um, but then. I had to little by little start buying equipment. Uh, the first thing I realized was that the difference between a Wi-Fi connection and an Ethernet connection, which I'd heard of Ethernet, but I didn't really know. But I bought an Ethernet cable, which is right here, and it plugs in directly to my computer from my router. And that changed everything. That like made a huge difference. Um, and then I had a mic that I had used for something else, but it wasn't good for um, music. And so this past week, I, I did all this research on mics for pianos. And so this past week, I, I made a major investment of uh, piano mics um, that I have set up here, two piano mics with uh, mic stands. And um, I had to buy a, an audio box. So my... <laughs> You know, I think it's happened to all of us. My knowledge of technology and audio technology has had to like go straight up, you know. I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, I, I needed to buy a, um, an adapter for, for something. And I didn't even know like what the little hole was called to put the adapter in because there were all <laughs> different size holes. And I'm on Amazon looking and I'm, I'm looking at the little holes. So. Um, it's been quite a learning curve for me, but I, I'm sure I'm not the only one, you know, so, so those are my, my audio technical challenges. So, but now, you know, I teach piano lessons um, on Zoom and my students, some of them have gotten Ethernet. And so now we can teach much, I feel much more comfortable. The sound is back and forth. There's a little bit of delay, but it's not as bad. So things are looking up. Ethernet is much quicker when you plug it in. This is Helen. When you plug it in directly to Ethernet, it's much quicker than regular Zoom. Well, what it is about Ethernet and Ethernet cable is that the internet runs on a cable, so it doesn't. We don't realize it, but wireless, it fluctuates. But an Ethernet cable is is it's direct, so it's like a, a plugging a cord in. So it's a gazillion times better. I would rec. In fact, I put my my office computer on the ethernet cable too. I, I have both my computers um, on the ethernet because uh, the signals is much stronger, it's steadier, it's everything. And it's easy. You just buy an ethernet cable and you plug it in. Good to know, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Happy to share my knowledge. Can you play with other people with that? No. Yeah, okay. That I cannot do. Um, but there are other programs that you can do, like um, Jam Kazam. Uh, no, no, Jam Kazam. Um, there's another one called, oh, I can't remember, um, that people are using to play together. Zoom, there's still a little bit of a delay. Um, but Jam, oh, what's the other one? I, I can't think of it. Anyway, I'll, I'll think of it later. Ask okay. Jody. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Cynthia, it's Paul again. Yes. Would you like to tell us a bit about your um, the acting side of your career and, and what what you have coming up or what you're working on? Are, are you going to create a solo Ile de Joie? Um, one so, act? <laughs> so, yeah, when the pandemic hit, I was supposed to perform this two-person show um, based on a German story called Kronenstrasse. It was a Holocaust story. So I had like this huge role, you know, I was doing a German accent and um, there was music. I didn't sing, but there was music. So that got canned. So that was really too bad because it was a really an amazing piece with Chelsea Opera. Um, yeah, my, my solo show, Velvet Determination, which is about my journey from Pueblo, Colorado to New York City as a classical pianist and Dr. Makovsky, if you're still on, you're, you're in my show. You're like a big, big part of my show. Um, anyway, um, I was able to perform 20 minutes of that with this group in San Francisco called the Marsh Stream. They have a solo show um, thing, um, event that they do. And so I did that two weeks ago uh, with them. So 
The only thing I've been doing right now is I've done a bunch of Zoom readings. You know, there's a lot of theater going on on Zoom, so I've done a bunch of Zoom readings, and um, I don't, other than, I mean, I think what I do want to do with my solo show is I ultimately want to tape the whole show because then I'll have it. Um, because there are a lot of platforms that you don't necessarily have to do something live. You can, you can have a tape, and so if I do that, then I just send it off and, and press the change. So many people can watch it. Um, but then I'm also working on another solo show um, about the um, two months that David and I went to Horse Cave, Kentucky, where I was in two plays, huh. and sort of the disconnect between being in a small town in Kentucky and being in New York and all these crazy things that happen. So I'm, I'm still working on that. I'm in actually a writer's group right now um, working on it. So it's still not there, but, but it's in the works. Mm -hmm. So for right now, that's, that's all there is right now for me. But I want to learn some new piano music. So, I, so that's next on my agenda. Well, then with, with your calendar so open, we'll have to think about a, uh, an encore. <laughs> Well, maybe in the next month I'll learn a brand new program. Lord knows. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. So anyway. Yeah. So, folks, are there any additional uh, comments that folks would like to make or questions for Cynthia before we say goodnight? Well, once again, Cynthia, thank you so much. This was really thrilling. It was great. Thank you. Great to hear you and to be here with all friends from across the country. Yeah, yeah, thank you. You know, I would love, um, I don't want you you and um, Galen to hang up because I would love to have the chat because I see there have been 71 people who have said something and I would love to read what everybody says. Okay. Um, yeah, I would really love to read that. I, and I thank the people who posted before the concert because even though I should have been focusing, I actually read some of your chats, so thank you all for saying your kind words even before the concert. That was really um, heartwarming and um, yeah, lovely. Those of you who are still with us, um, I believe that CDNY has a concert coming up on October 17th. Uh, I think it's Pete Siegel, and I, I forget the other one, maybe oh. Gail and no, we can yes. tell yes. us. Peter so, Stanger. I've heard Pete Siegel before. He's awesome. He's a really great really wonderful performer. Yeah, we'll have Peter Siegel and Cedar Stanistreet, both excellent contra dance musicians. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about the concert on Sunday, Paul? Isn't there something um, from the Lennox Assembly on Sunday? Well, uh, it's actually on, on Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Right, at four o'clock on Saturday on Karen Axelrod's Facebook page. <laughs> uh, she will be going live with Alchemy Plays Freet. Dances from the Lennox Assembly. Um, highly recommended. I, I want to say too, um, if, if um, there were people that you know who couldn't come tonight, um, this, this performance will actually be archived on the CDNY Facebook page, so you can, you can watch it there, so just so people know. And there's a bunch of other performances there too, so you can, you can just watch all kinds of music. And okay. uh, um, um, Thank you all. Nancy, where do we find the um, contribution tip box? Um, you can, it should be in the chat somewhere, but if you want, you can send it to, um, at PayPal using my email address, Cynthia Shaw at MindSpring, or else on Venmo, it's Cynthia slash a dash Shaw, and you'll see my, my headshot picture. So, um, so E e either one of those. Okay, thank yeah. you. It was well, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Don't <laughs> encourage her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, so see you, Nancy and Mike. Very nice to see you both. And June, it's great to yeah, see you. Yeah. Wow. I know it's so great to see everybody. I know I should I should do the. Oh, I lost everybody. Anyways, so I can see everybody. <laughs> and Helen, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. I'm still here. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, everybody's here. Yeah. Yeah, thank you Great. all. And Everett, Everett, oh my goodness, and Orly, and Carol, and Annette, and Roberta. Roberta, my, my, um, my pianist friend from, um, who's an amazing pianist in Florida. Oh my God, Roberta is like awesome. <laughs> 
I'm so thrilled that she's here. There she is. She's waving. I hope you had a bourbon while you were watching. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so great to see Roberta. Oh my gosh. And Joan, my student Joan, who's who's my biggest supporter, my piano student. There she is. And Kathy. David, David Hurd was uh, uh, here also earlier. Who, who was? David Hurd. Oh, he was? Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, David Hurd. Um, I, I sang under him for years and years at uh, Saint, um, at All Saints and uh, Holy Apostles and then at St. Mary the Virgin. So, yeah, it's not a good time for choral singing right now, but but I'm so glad he was here. And Marlene May, who I haven't seen forever in a day. Wow. And there's, who else is here? Kathy O'Connor from New Mexico and Paul Hudgens was here. Oh, there's Paul Hudgens. Yep and Hera and iPad 4 and there's somebody who's, I don't see who they are, but anyway. Nancy Wright was here. Oh, she is? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Wow, thank you all so, so much. Wow, it's just great to see everybody. Warms my heart. Yeah, it is great. So.